So once we got the car back together, this stator that's in the car now, it was in the 400. So in theory, going from a 400 to a power glide, the converter should act looser um, because of the first gear being longer. And we put the car together and the thing would not get on the converter, it wouldn't even get close. I think I got to like 3400 RPM, it's about the best I could get out of it. And I'm not really a tuner, but I've always been able to get on a two-step or whatever, you know, adding timing or whatever it may be to get it to get there, but it wasn't doing jack shit. So I figured we'll take it to Caesar at HPF. He's literally half a mile down the road. He's probably one of the best tuners here local. And if he can't get it done, then obviously there's something wrong. So we got it on the dyno. It made really pretty good power, for, you know, what, what you would expect. But it was super laggy, it took forever to get to boost, and we ended up blowing the intercooler weld. So we got that fixed and then I started trying to think of you know why it was so tight. We didn't get to get on the converter because we blew up the intercooler. Um, and so then I got with my buddy Josh, the one that built the turbo kit. He also builds transmissions. He told us to uh, go pick up his, he has like this little ga gauge with the fitting on it so that I can check converter charge pressure, which it should be under 100, I think around 80 pretty much at all times. So we got that to the shop, did that yesterday, and right away we pretty much figured out the problem. It's about 55, 60 pounds in part. Uh, you put it in first and you try to just get on the converter, just try to like brake stall it like you would like an NA car, and it shoots up to like 150. So then I got on the trans brake, floored it, it got to 3400 and it was already past 180. ideal at all it should be under 100 um, and I believe the way that works the higher the charge pressure um, the tighter the converter is going to act which you know it shouldn't be over 100 anyway so the converter is acting tighter than what it actually is so if I were to go and, and, and restall it looser I'm literally just pissing in the wind like I'm not fixing the problem so we were going to take the, tra the transmission out and take it to Josh and he's gonna pull the pump out and make the, you basically drill, um, you you drill like a 0.125 uh, hole in a char the charge pressure feed. You do that and you basically restrict it and lower the, the pressures. Well, we found out, I think Pete Nichols at, well he was at Hughes, now he's at Circle D. Uh, he made a post that you can actually do it from the, you take off the pen on a power glide and you can do that without having to take the tranny out or anything so that's what we're doing now we pulled the pan off we took the valve body off we found the hole everything's good uh, we're gonna drill the hole big enough for the tap then we're gonna tap it and then we're going to put a like allen head um, in there and then drill the right size that we need and I think that's gonna fix the problem I'm, I'm more than sure that's gonna fix the problem we'll see I'm here at uh, Vato Zone I'm gonna get some grease and then we'll head back to the shop. So basically guys, this is what we're gonna do. We took the valve body off. This hole right here, this one, the, the second one from the end, this hole, um, I guess it goes to the converter and that affects your converter charge pressure. So, we got the proper drill bit. All this we took from uh, Steve, uh, not Steve, Pete Nichols at uh, Circle D. Um, he had a write up on it. So we got the proper drill bit. We're gonna drill it. Then we are going to tap it. 
we're gonna put this Allen head in there and then we're going to drill an eighth inch hole inside of it and put it in there and that should alleviate our high charge pressure we have the, the little gauge on it right now um, and once we get that settled I mean it should be good to go we ended up fixing the intercooler took it off we had straps welded we re rewelded re the whole thing and then had straps welded to it um, we also spaced it back the radiator a little bit they were telling us that we need a little bit of space here so we tried to get some more space and that's about it it's pretty much ready to hit the track other than this little mistake <laughs> guys so we're here with the car um, we are gonna be doing a basically do-it-yourself uh, dump valve it's a little bit cheaper route than buying a um, like a dump valve system from uh, Hughes sells one ATF sells one but they're like 650 bucks and I got everything here with fittings and all I got maybe I don't know 200 bucks invested it's just a uh, US solid uh, valve with a 70 psi high-speed check valve a couple fittings I'm waiting on two other fittings we're gonna add a uh, converter charge pressure sensor um, so basically restricting the uh, the feed through the valve body didn't work and if it did work it didn't it didn't it didn't, it didn't help enough um, we drilled it 0.125 and then down to 0.093 ish somewhere around there and it it went from like 180 over 180 psi just getting on trying to get to the two-step it dropped to like 150 so didn't really make much of a difference um so we're gonna go ahead and do the check valve and the dump valve um i really don't need the dump valve i don't think i think it's going to be pretty loose the converter but who knows i may put a G gt55 on it later or if i do a drag week or something and it's high elevation you know i could probably use it it could probably you know uh, serve some good and the valve itself was like 35 bucks so we're gonna try to get this dump valve and stuff installed tomorrow and then we're gonna try to hit the track friday and do some driving with the car <laughs> 